Hi everyone, so welcome. Um, thanks so much for joining us for today's session. So we're really excited. We're going to be launching our annual review um, report today and talking a little bit about what's in the report and what's been happening this year and then looking forward to next year um, and what we'll be doing um, in 2023, which isn't that far away. Um, so in today's um, webinar, we're going to be kind of walking through different aspects of um, what we've been doing over the past year. So we're going to talk a little bit about 2022 conferences um, and face-to-face -face events, and then also a little bit about OER 23. And um, as some of you may have already seen in our recent newsletter, um, our plans for uh, April. Um, we'll then have a little quick look at the GoGN annual survey results, um, which uh, um, uh, some of you will be aware of and which are in the report as well, um, followed by fellowships with PACO, a bit on publications and outputs and kind of looking forward as well into 2023. And then also, yeah, starting to look at what we'll be doing in the coming months uh, going forward as well, just to wrap things up. So really excited to share with you. Um, we've got a few uh, things along the way to share um, as well as we go through. Um, but I'll now hand over to Martin um, to kick things off. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Beck. Um, the graphics are from Brian Mathers, uh, and each year we kind of do a theme. And this, because we had uh, managed to hold our first face to face conferences this year, like many people, for the first time since 2019, the, the theme's very much of getting the band back together. So that's why you've kind of got mu musical penguins. So I'm just going to go through some of the conferences uh, we've done and talk about OER 23 next year. So if you want to do the next slide back. So um, this is in the report, the uh, timeline that you can uh, see what we've been up to. Um, so we had the back, we'll talk about the fellowships we've been doing. Um, so the big thing we did was uh, we chaired OER 22 um, back in uh, April this year. Uh, that was the first time. So we get, um, we'll come to it in a minute, but we had uh, quite a few GoGNers there. And it was good to kind of get me back face to face again. Um, and then some people went to, some of the team went to Nantes. Uh, we did a Wikipedia editathon again, again, people to edit Wikipedia pages. That was uh, so I repeat from last year, which has been a really useful exercise. Do you want to go on back? Um, uh, we had a really, so we've been doing webinars throughout the year. We had a really uh, popular one in the summer from uh, from Gino Franzman. Um, some of us went to Athens, which was good fun. Uh, we had a good time in Athens. And we also presented online to OpenEd. Um, Paco has been leading on the fellowships work and he launched the fellowship reflections report um, uh, last month. That's a really good report. Uh, it's worth reading. Um, and then now it's the uh, annual report. So busy year, you know, solid activity throughout the, the uh, each month. So I'll just talk a bit about the um, conferences. So OER 22. Um, we, oh, sorry. We brought together eight people, so it was, a, it was a slightly smaller version than the seminar we usually do. And I'll come on to the seminars we usually do. That's so usually we have about fifteen people, but it was the first sort of event we had done, and we just had a one-day event. Uh, so it was in London, uh, OER twenty-two conference, uh, and we brought together people the day before, and they got to present about their research in the typical GoGM format, uh, and then also present at the conference if they wanted to. Um, we had uh, about twenty. Uh, GoGN members and alumni presenting uh, as authors at, um, at OER 22 and we were the co-chairs so it we kind of had, oh, it had GoGN branding all over it. it was a really good kind of I think it was nice sort of fairly small conference it was a good kind of way to start back I think uh, dipping your toe back in order uh, April seems a long time ago but I think for a lot of us it was quite uh, an emotional experience that you kind of got to meet people again for the first time face to face after a a long period out and so it was a really kind of nice friendly conference to do that with uh, do you want to go on back um and then some of the team went off to nantes to present at oe global and look at that collection of reprobates there all wearing their gogm merchandise that was a good meeting and a good front conference so um oe global is usually the conference that we align the um uh the where the, the gogn seminars to 
and we had been planning to go to Taiwan in 2020, which is where it was going to be held. And of course, um, the pandemic hit. And so this was the first OE Global conference since then. So again, it kind of felt like a real kind of reuniting of various people. So that was really good, kind of getting the gang back together again. Do you want to go on, Beck? Um, uh, there was a good presence at Alt-C. Rob keynoted uh, the Alt-C conference in Manchester. And we had a, a number of papers there. So that was a, a good that's the learning technology conference. So slightly outside uh, the open education conference. I think it was good to kind of reach a, a slightly different audience. Um, and we went to the IHE 2022 conference in Athens, which is the one run by uh, EDTU, so kind of European distance, tech, uh, distance teaching universities. Um, and it was at the same week as uh, open ed uh in the states which is uh, mainly online so we presented for that as well so you know good good representation at um, various conferences so it felt very much like you know getting back in the swing of things now and uh next one back so um uh, lastly say so next year uh 4th of 6th uh, april 2023 is uh oer 23 uh, it's going to be held in inverness in scotland um we are again partners uh, so we're going to be uh, involved in organizing that conference uh, and we've recently sent around in the email uh, expressions of interest if people want to come to that conference and, and come to the the gogn seminar beforehand so we'll bring about 15 people to that hopefully um, so if you want to come and if you haven't done it already then please put in an expression of interest we, we then um, so see the newsletter that Beck sent around. Um, and if you haven't got it, just give us a shout and we can ping it over to you. Um, we try to have a, a range of people. So, it's, you know, so we try to have people from different areas around the world, people at different stages of their PhDs. We try to get a mix in the group. So um, to apply and uh, then you never know. And we'll pay for travel and we've got accommodation there. And then you can also attend the conference itself. So we'll run the seminar beforehand, the day or so beforehand. Um, and then go to the conference uh, and should be fun in Inverness as uh, a lot of people really excited about it. so it'll be quite I think it'll be a bigger event than OER 22 so it should be a, a fun conference and we really like us getting back in the swing of things so please put in for that and submit a paper as well so uh, Jan when's the deadline for papers back is it Jan the 10th uh, yeah January the 10th for yeah call for papers for call for papers and we've asked if you want to come to let us know by the 17th of Jan so we can select who's going to come cool thanks mate thanks so much martin that's great um so yeah please um do put in um put in if you haven't done so already and then also just to add in and we'll share a link in the chat shortly that we've got um brian's images are available on a cc by license and, and we'll share a folder um the folder where those are um shortly so thanks so much again martin and now moving on to talk about our gojian annual surveys so um, a big thank you to everyone who participated in this year's survey. Um, we had 20 people respond um, this year, um, so slightly less than previous years. Um, obviously, this isn't the only opportunity as well to give us feedback, so feel free to email us or get in touch um, on social at any point if you have any feedback or things that you wanted to raise with us. So um, although we run the survey and it's super important um, to hear from our membership at this point, we are open at all other points throughout the year for, for feedback. So as you can see on this slide, um, we had largely um, our respondents were GoGM members who've been in the network for quite some time or have also um, completed their doctoral studies and um, are alumni. So pretty familiar and involved in the network as we'll see. As Martin um, mentioned, um, Earlier this year in April, we co-chaired OER 22, um, and uh, it was fantastic to see that 80% of respondents to this year's survey thought that being involved and us co-chairing um, the conference raised the network's profile. Um, we're also seeing over the past few years um, during the pandemic, we've been asking um, our membership uh, how likely they would be to participate in face-to-face -face events. So um, it's good to see that this year, you know, we've got over 80% of our um, members and alumni saying they're very likely or likely to be able to participate in future face-to-face -face events going forward. And again, it was really good to hear um, from people that they think that we were supporting them very well um, or um, okay reasonably well um, as well during the um, past year in relation to pandemic support. 
So the top five benefits of GoGN this year um, uh, are as follows. We've got webinars at the top. As Martin mentioned, we've um, ran a number of different webinars this year, including new member specials um, and other events such as um, hearing from our fellows. And Paco will talk a little bit more um, about our fellowship program shortly. Um, we also supported people to participate in different conferences throughout the year, um, and that came up as number two on the top five benefits, followed by a website newsletter and as well the fellowship um, uh, scheme uh, were mentioned by members of being important. In terms, um, and this relates as well to what we'll see in a moment, um, top three GoGN activities across the past year included engaging with both us, um, the team on social media, but also discussions with other GoGN members. So we've got a number of different platforms um, and ways that we um, that people are connecting with each other. So Twitter, using the new, new WhatsApp um, group and so on to talk with other members and share um, and share uh, and discuss, um, discuss. We also note again that the GoGM webinar and participation in the GoGM webinar is really important um, and activities that people regularly are involved with as part of the network. As you might expect from those responses, um, community of peers and networking opportunities um, are coming up as really important features of GoGN for our um, respondents of this year's survey. Um, and advice on open practices again at number three. Um, one and three actually are the same um, <laughs> uh, um, as, as the previous year and networking opportunities again is reappearing um, from the previous, um, from 2020. So um, we're starting to kind of move as Martin mentioned into, um, into uh, uh, testing the water and returning to face-to-face -face events um, and hoping to do more of that in the year ahead. So these are really important kind of things as well. Um, for the GoGN community. Um, uh, just a sample of um, some quotes from um, uh, across the uh, survey, and I'm gonna talk a little bit um, about aspects of the survey that we're not, we're still analyzing and looking at at the moment. So we did ask a number of other kind of questions about the 10th anniversary. So with GoGen will be 10 um, next year in 2023, kind of thinking about research publications and ideas for things that people might want to do collaboratively as part of GoGen. And Rob will talk a bit more um, about that shortly. But just to give you a sense of the kind of feedback that we're, we get or we're getting from our membership here, you can see people talking about the connection and the support. Um, the focus on equity and epistemic justice. And you can read a bit about the EDI work that um, Karina and Paco have been doing um, in, the, in the annual um, review. Um, and then also the management of the network and the support from the team, as well as the support from the wider community of GoGN members. So as I mentioned, we're still looking at um, uh, at the responses at the moment, um, we've got some feedback around future activities, um, potential collaborative reports, 10th anniversary, um, and so on. So we're going to be looking at those and looking at ways that we can better or further support the kind of variety of activities um, uh, that are both happening informally within the network, but also formally. So um, as you may be aware, since um, the start of the pandemic, we've kind of diversified our offering um, and with different activities. Martin mentioned the Wicker um, PDA editing of open education articles, um, for example, and the new member research specials um, and so on. So kind of continuing to look at how ways we can um, ways we can uh, build on that uh, going forward, um, as well as hearing some um, uh, feedback about the management of the network and our support for members. So yeah, thank you it's for those. So as I mentioned, selected provisional results are published in the GoGN annual review, which is out today. And we'll put that link in the chat um, uh, shortly. Continue to look at the survey data and then also develop some recommendations based on this year's and previous survey results going forward. So yeah, look forward to sharing those with you all in due course. Thanks so much. I now hand over to Paco for fellowships. Thanks. Hello everyone, thank you very much. So the fellowship scheme uh, has been working since 2020 and now we have the third court. Please, uh, next slide. 
So the third and last from this phase, I lasted from February until July, and we had three brilliant, excellent uh, fellows, Michael, Viviana, and Catherine, with different uh, proposals. So Michael was working basically about how to work in principles for open education, to introduce future teachers, to the practice of openness, while Vivian was in the context of impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on Brazilian public school teachers. And Catherine just created, a, a, allowing the redundance, a just knowledge project as a network to work with different NGOs in Ireland. So we got a total of nine fellows uh, during these three years. You can find all the information, uh, blog posts, et cetera, uh, on the website. Uh, please, next slide. And from all those experiences, we have written the fellowship reflection report, which uh, basically is distributed in a, in a three key areas. So trying to understand the, the scheme itself, the contextualization, the reason and behind, uh, introducing our fellows, uh, as well, all the steps they have followed, presenting at conferences, producing blog posts, presenting at several webinars. Then we have the experiences and reflections, which basically are their own uh, reports, which is quite interesting because they had the opportunity to reflect on their experience in 2000 words, each of them. And finally, the fellowship skin experience itself uh, from the interviews and data we gather during this experience uh, from uh, conversations with fellows and the interviews. Next slide. So regarding those interviews, we have already been uh, releasing them through social media, but they are all available on YouTube and as, actually as well from the website if you want to. And uh, it's very interesting to get to know the different experiences. And there are some other videos regarding impact and particular areas from the experiences which uh, Beck has kindly joined together, uh, with uh, which involves experiences from our nine uh, great fellows from, from Gaudian. Thank you. Thanks so much, Paco. That's great. Yeah. Please do go and check out. There's loads of um, blog posts in the report. And as Paco said, there's some fantastic interviews as well with, with our fellows. So yeah, please do go and um, have a look if you haven't already at those. I'm now I'm gonna hand over to Rob, who's gonna tell us a bit more about publications and outputs um, this year and going forward. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Beck. Um, can we have the next slide, please? Um, so um, we published a little bit less in our, um, publication stream this year than in the previous two years. And um, the uh, first one we published uh, was the research review, which is our regular um, collaborative attempt to understand recent recent research. And uh, the reviews are written by members um, and, and collated into these uh, research reviews. So we've done one each year for the past three years. And so there's uh, several dozen um, reviews all collected together in this series. Uh, most recently, um, we, we looked at papers on accessibility, uh, OEP, OER, uh, things around implementation and impact, open pedagogy, MOOCs, um, quality for OER and technology and infrastructure. So quite a big range of, um, of papers that we covered. There's lots of other papers that we could have covered as well. So I think it's kind of... Um, kind of shows that there's quite a lot of uh, maturity developing around uh, open education research in these areas. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully people find the research review useful, both as a resource, but also for those who take part and kind of get that experience. Uh, next slide, please. And so out today, we have the annual review, which um, summarizes all of our activities across 2022 and includes more detail on some of the things that have been mentioned so far, like the annual survey, uh, the fellowships and the EDI project. Um, so yeah, go and check out the annual review. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so um, the kind of concluding publication for this uh, phase of outputs in GoGN um, will be a, a sort of general handbook that pulls together all of the other outputs into one volume. Um, we're also thinking that there's probably some stuff out there that's uh, on a CC by license, which we can also pull in. And the goal is to um, arrive at um, a single volume that we can give to people who are kind of just joining the network or just starting their PhD or their EdD. Um, and so they've got one resource that has all this stuff um, that we've produced over the last three years through collaboration and, and co-writing 
all in one place for uh, people to uh, make use of. Um, so that's going to be something coming early in the new year uh, and we'll ready, be ready before the OER 23 conference. And if you do have anything that you'd like us to include in there that's on an open license, then yeah, just let the team know. Thanks. Thanks so much, Rob. Um, I'm now going to pass back to Martin for looking forward to um, next year. Thanks, Martin. Sorry, Rebecca, I'm trying to be fancy with having multiple screens and then I get lost. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as Bex mentioned, next year is 10th anniversary of uh, of GoGen. This is not many projects keep going for 10 years, so big celebrations. So, um, Paco and Karina have been working on uh, the EDI works. They've had um, two rounds of funding uh, through Hewlett Foundation, looking at how we can make um, GoGen more uh, equitable and diverse. Um, and so they're going to uh, launch a report about that. And I think that sort of applies across more projects and GoGen. There's lots of useful advice in that. Um, we're going to go out to the members and say, you know, now we're thinking about 10 years and we'll be coming to the end of this round of funding um, uh, at the end of April. So I'm going to ask them what people think the future of GoGen should look like. Um, Rob's mentioned uh, outputs we put out there. So we're going to combine the uh, various open research um, handbooks we put together in, into one large handbook and, and also take that as an opportunity to update and, and advise them. So I think that'll be a really useful kind of comprehensive cover if ever you've used the, the research methods or the conceptual frameworks uh, books. Uh, and then we'll start launching our 10th anniversary celebrations, um, which will carry on throughout the year. And we hope to sort of interview people who have been important uh, to go journey throughout its history as well over that. So hopefully, uh, come May, we'll be into a new phase with new funding of um, GoGN, although we should never assume this uh, so that it was it's funded by the Hewlett Foundation. Um, as you said, we'll be hosting the uh, OER23 GoGN workshop seminar uh, in April. So please come along to that. Um, the Eden Conference uh, 2023 is in Dublin in June, I think, um, and we'll have a presence there. Uh, we'll host the Wikipedia Edison again, um, so inviting people to come in and we we'll offer some advice and training on how to edit Wikipedia pages around OER or create new um, OER pages. There's been a kind of a dearth of good OER pages in Wikipedia, so I think that this kind of concerted effort over the past couple of years has really improved its presence there. Um, and Otessa 2023 will be in Toronto, uh, so we might get to come your way uh, and see you, Lucas, that'll be good. <laughs> and then in July uh, to September, uh, OE Global's in Edmonton. Hey, we're going to Canada twice. I'm particularly excited about, is it is it September or October? The, uh, Edmonton, Global. I'm excited about that because it should be in hockey season, so I might get to see the Oilers. So that's the most important thing. Uh, and Open Ed will be around then as well. And then towards the end of the year, we'll do a survey again and hope and repeat this. Thanks so much, Martin. And um, yeah, thank you. A uh, big thank you to um, everyone here today, and then also everyone who's um, watching the recording as well. Um, yeah, we really couldn't do it without our membership and supporters. So thank you for being um, part of GoGN throughout the year. Um, we really do appreciate yeah, your support and involvement in the network. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you. So I think that's, yeah, that's everything from today's um, session i'm going to post some um links in the chat as well because obviously there's been some things mentioned that have just come out we've got the report and then also um brian's imagery um as well and some other things that have been mentioned throughout so i'm going to pop some links in the chat and things but i think if we stop the recording now maybe we can have a general um chat or discussion or if there's things that people want to ask questions about that came up on the call then um that would be really great to hear um, as well. So I'll just stop the recording if that's okay with everyone. <laughs>